Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Good day and welcome to the show. Listen, I'm glad to have you guys here on this Monday, the 20th of July, 2020. Now, I'm going to tell you what. My show has been going on for years and years and years now on this channel. And each and every day for years now, I've done a comprehensive look at the markets. Not just the, the silver price, gold price, cryptocurrency prices, Dow Jones Industrial Average prices, uh, the uh, oil prices, the U.S. Treasury prices, the dollar price prices, each and every day, and, and also give a, a, a summary of what's happening in this this crisis that's unfolding right now. So uh, later in history, you know, this would be, my channel would be a good place to go uh, to pick a date if you wanted to see where the markets were and what kind of what was happening in the world. It's kind of like a uh, uh, a financial blog that's, that's really going to be helpful, I think, in the future for people that want to check on things, you know. I'd be able to research on my channel and go back to a particular date and they could see exactly where the market was that day and what was happening in the world and, and everything else. It's a good record, a good record to keep. Uh, anyway, uh, today, this is what's happening in the world right now. Seriously. I put this little clip up here for you guys to see what's happening in the world. Uh, and now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to we're going to move into the market and take a look at what's going on. First, we're going to take a look at the silver price and take a look at what's going on. First, we're going to take a look at the silver price today. Uh, it was up all morning. It's at 1970 right now. Uh, from what I hear, it crossed twenty dollars just to, just for a little bit or up close to twenty dollars. And then it's backed away. That's not unusual for markets when they get up and they hit a psychological barrier. An awful lot of people put stop orders and things in it at that particular psychological barrier, like at $20, $30, $50, so on, you know. And so if it goes up and it touches this, that barrier, what will happen is, is it will back away. As markets always do that. When they reach a new level, they always back away a little bit. Anyway, we're looking at $19.70. It's up $0.38 cents on the day. Uh, I, myself... I consider $20, $21, in around that range to be the end of the bear market in, in uh, silver. But uh, we're not quite there yet. We've we've touched these highs. So let's put it this way. Silver's doing a lot better than it was. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at gold today. Gold's at $18.16, up $6.50. You know, the reason why these precious metals are going up in value is, is we're going through the fourth turning right now. Uh, we are in a period of global upheaval, such as not been paralleled for hundreds of years. We've never seen anything like this before. And back when we did see something like this before, back hundreds of years ago, people were self-sufficient. There was no such thing as electricity. There was no telecommunications. Uh, people were self-sufficient. Everybody had a place they could go to where they could produce food for themselves, basically. The uh, big urban centers. You know, right now we have 80% of the world's population living in urban centers and around cities or close to cities. All packed in like sardines. This is a recipe for disaster. Because they are totally 100% reliant upon delivery systems that have been set up in place to bring them their food, bring them their water, bring them everything they need. And with a massive disruption like what's coming, uh, how are they going to get their food? How are they going to get their water? And then they'll go crazy after, when they don't get their medications, food, water, and the essential basic things they need to live. They'll go crazy. Take a look now at homeless people. Yes, there's a lot of homeless people out there. But for a lot of homeless people, they're there for a reason. A lot of them are uh, have substance abuse problems, you know, or or they're very dysfunctional, and uh, maybe mental issues and things like that. That's the way it is now, and that's the way it's been up till now. And these people, you know, they might get up in the morning uh, after sleeping on the sidewalk or whatever, you know, and they go out and they might panhandle for fifteen or twenty minutes, and they get enough money to go to a Wendy's and get themselves something to eat. 
But, you know, when, when, uh, when we see an influx of homeless people of like 20 million people, then all of a sudden those options are not available anymore. What are they going to do? Well, it just takes a spark to ignite the big forest fire. You know, and, and this, this is what could happen, and, and these people could end up uh, taking down the systems that are in place to provide them food in these urban areas. Uh, I don't think it'll happen so much out in the country, but then you'd have a mass influx of people trying to get out of these more urban areas all of a sudden. And like I say, 80% of the population lives in, in these intensely packed urban areas. You know, it could form problems, especially in, in places like in around big cities like Chicago and places like that. Uh, things are changing so fast right now. And we're getting millions of people every every week or every month that are coming in and filing for unemployment. It's it, This problem's only growing. It's growing bigger. And if they don't do something, if they don't fix this, if they don't get off their butts and establish some sort of social programs out there that are going to take care of these people, we are quite literally going to have starving people. And it's going to fulfill these prophecies, like, uh, they're not prophecies, but things that were said, like, about what the central banks would do. The central banks, uh, if a central bank was allowed, it's going to ultimately, in the end, leave uh, people homeless. It couldn't be more explicit. So we are going through the fourth turning right now. Anyway, 1816 for, for gold. Cryptocurrency today, $272 billion, with a Bitcoin dominance of 62%. That Bitcoin dominance is down low right now, 62%, and that's a bullish sign for Bitcoin. Bitcoin's at 91.63, the price. And the reason why we're at $272 billion is, is people are moving into the altcoins. And when people are moving into the alternative coins... That's a bullish sign for Bitcoin itself. Uh, and the Bitcoin price is staying down a little bit, but the altcoins are starting to move a little bit upwards in price. That's bullish. Okay, so we've got bullish signals in the cryptocurrency market. Dow Jones Industrials right now. It's, up, it's down 70 points on the day, 26,601. This... I'll tell you what I'm picturing in my mind happening with the stock market. I'm going to tell you what I picture in my mind. I picture a sudden flash, almost like a flash crash, where the where the stock market goes down immensely fast, unbelievably fast, and then what happens is it bottoms uh, when the Fed comes in and reacts to it. It's going to take the Fed a little while to react to it. And when they come in, and they, they'll, they will go behind, the Fed will quite literally, if the stock market really falls out of the bed, bad, it drops, it sheds several thousand points. It could, it, right now, it's in a position, it could shed four, or five, six thousand points overnight. And the Fed will go into the back room in there, and they'll talk it over, and they'll pound their fists on the table and everything else. And when they come out, and they announce, and, and it's announced to the world what they're doing. You'll see the stock market rebound. So it'll make a V. The shot, the stock market's what's going to make a V recovery. Yeah, that's so. What I'm expecting is a extremely short-lived fall in the stock market, and then them pumping way more money back in. That's going to be your big thing for gold and silver. Is you could actually, when the stock market falls, if it falls real fast like that, you could see gold and silver fall back a little bit. Well, you're saying to yourself, oh, I'll rush in and get some then. Don't do it, because it'll disappear. Uh, there's big money out there, and if the gold and silver price drop any from where it is right now, they're going to be in there scooping it up, and they're going to want the physical. And you might not be able to get any if you wait, you know, so... so and it's going to be extremely short-lived because on the other side of that, the Fed's going to go back to, to propping everything back up. They can't let this system collapse completely. It would be unimaginable what would happen, and they would be held responsible. They're not going to let that happen. And so they're just going to keep pumping money, money, money in at the expense of the dollar. Uh, ultimately, in the end, there's going to be a 
a point where they start to push too far and the dollar starts to lose value. So they're they're hunting and they're chasing right now this 2% inflation rate, the, the Federal Reserve. They want 2% inflation rate, you know, and they're going to keep pushing and they're going to overshoot it. They're going to hit the 2% and then it's going to go to 4 and 8, 16, 32. It's just going to go zoom. And then they're not going to be able to put the genie back in the bottle once that inflation monster is off to the races. At that point, I don't think they're really going to care that much anyway. Uh, the dollar's just going to basically die a, a quick death at a certain point. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you're in the stock market even, uh, you might see the stock market go up amazingly high, but, you know, gold and silver be going up amazingly high too, but the stock market is going to be priced in dollars and settled in dollars. And if the dollar's going into a hyperinflation, you don't want that. You want... You want something that's out of the dollar, something that's going to maintain its value and maintain your purchasing power if we go into a hyperinflation. Now let's take a look at crude oil. Crude oil is creeping up. $40.69 today. It's up uh, uh, one-tenth of a penny, or one-tenth one -tenth of one percent. Uh, let's take a look at U.S. Treasuries today, and we're seeing the middle unchanged. Long ends falling. Looking at the U.S. 10-year at uh, 0.61 and the U.S. 30-year at 0.31. And uh, they fell about one and a half basis points, more or less. Now let's take a look at the U.S. dollar index, 95.82. And it's, it's going down slowly today. Thank you guys for listening to my report. Like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. And uh, I'll tell you guys, I really appreciate my audience out there. Uh, these are hard times we're going through right now. And uh, it's going to be talked about for probably the next 100 years, what we're going through right now. People will say, oh, way back in 2020 when they had the virus. And they won't even have to say what virus. Everybody will know. And this will be like 50 years from now. Everybody will know exactly what it was. And it'll be it'll be written in the history books just like the Great Depression was written in the history books. This is a monumentous period in time right now and everything's changing. The whole world perspective is changing right now. Uh, right in front of your eyes. You're you're witnessing it. We'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye bye.